Hey folks, welcome back to Bite Your Daybreak Adventures. We have a pretty special video for you this time. We're meeting a fellow YouTuber, a friend of ours called Stu. He's got a website called Brit Hikes Ontario, which well worth watching. Uh, it's a British guy who's lived in Ontario and Canada for quite a long time. I think it was since about 2007. So he doesn't bird much in the UK. Apparently picked most of that up whilst in Canada. So we're going to do a big day with him, which will be ace, uh, trying to find some British birds for him that he's not seen. So we're heading there now and we're going to meet him in the morning. So follow us, join us, and it should be a really cool video. After a relatively short couple of hours and a quick stop at Tesco's to pick up a quilt, because it was really getting cold, we parked in a lay-by about 10 minutes from where Stu was staying and settled down for the night. We woke up at Blackstone Riverside Park. Morning folks, uh, it's coming up 8 o'clock, not quite. We're going to head off to pick Stu up in a minute for a day of British burden. We sorted ourselves out and the van and headed out to collect our fellow YouTuber. We are on the way to pick up our fellow YouTuber Stu, who is going to join us for a day's twitching uh, here in the UK. He's been in Canada since uh, I believe 2007 and he kind of got his zest for birding there. So he's been back a couple of times, done a little bit, but not like we do. Join us for the day. It was only a short drive to where he was staying, about 10 minutes. Look who we've got. Help. Help. <laughs> Our first stop was about 35 minutes away at Chelmarsh Reservoir. Hey folks. Hiya. Hiya. So we got lost um, and we're trying to find our way down to the reservoir and we're parked somewhere dodgy. But hey ho, that's life. Let's see if we can find some birds. We saw a few commoner birds on the way, like the singing robin and a flock of grey lag geese that flew overhead. But Unfortunately, it wasn't easy to access the reservoir, so we decided to move on. I'm out of breath because I'm not in shape, and I've just walked up a big hill. Um, there's not much here. You can't seem to get down to the reservoir so easy, so we're going to head off to a place we have been before, which is Aqualate Mia, which is generally pretty good for birds. It was about another 45 minutes drive up into Staffordshire to Aqualate Mia. Hey folks, we've moved to Aqualate Park, or Aqualate Mia, sorry. Um, there's Stu. Hello. Um, I don't know where Kaylee's gone, I think she's gone ahead because we were playing with the drone. Um, while the boys are playing. While the boys are playing, yes. She's disappeared ahead. So we're hoping this is a bit more successful than the last place we were. I can hear Robin already. Stick with us, we'll walk down to the mirror, see what we find. By this time it was mid-morning and the really cold chill had gone and it turned into quite a mild day. We wandered along the footpath, through the cow fields, on towards the hide, which overlooked the mere. When we arrived we had the hide to ourselves. The water level was much higher than the previous time we've been here. Birds in close included the ubiquitous mollard duck and a moorhen feeding in the shallows. A little further out there was a male shoveler upending and feeding. This was not the only duck here, there were loads of tufted ducks. These seem to be by far the most numerous birds here. A little bit further back, right against the back reeds, there were some swans. Unfortunately there was a lot of haze, so it was difficult to tell if they were our resident mute swans or the winter visiting hooper swans. After a short time, we were joined by a young male reed bunting, who sat in the reeds quite close to the hide. To the right hand side of the hide, there was a bird feeder that was being frequented by lots of small birds, mainly blue tits and also some great tit. One welcome but brief visitor to these feeders was a male great spotted woodpecker. Before we left, we had another scan of the mare noticing that some of the coot in front of us were fighting among themselves. As we left, a flock of cormorant flew overhead, but now it was time to move on. It was time not only for a change of scenery, but a change of habitat, and hopefully a change of potential bird species. Where are we going? <laughs> Where are we going? 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 Where are
are we going? Hey, we're going to Titterston Clee, I believe, which is some high moorland. Uh, looking hopefully for some stone chat, um, meadow pipit, and apparently someone had seen a ringoos up here, which would be amazing. I'm not holding out too much hope, but that'll be cool. Stick with us, it should be fun. So we've come to a really different environment now. Um, we're at Clee Hill in Shropshire. Um, hello, which is like high moorland, and we've seen we've seen a couple of birds already. Stone chat. We've just seen a wheat here, which is particularly late. We thought it would it would have probably migrated by now. But um, amazing views, really nice place. Let's see what else we can find. Clee Hill was an amazing landscape with some pretty spectacular views. After a brief mooch here, we travelled about 10 minutes down the road to Clee Hill Quarry, where in previous days someone had reported seeing a ringoozle. So we thought it was definitely worth a look. The scenery around the quarry was quite surreal, but the views from the quarry looking out over the surrounding landscape were wide and breathtaking. But now it was time to go and have a look around to see what birds we could find. And the first is a bird that's pretty common in these kind of surroundings, which is the meadow pipit. This one feeding on a gravel bank. As we walked up the hill there was plenty of birds to be heard, including ravens, but unfortunately I got no footage of these. Another quite vocal bird was a buzzard. There were a pair of them flying around, one being mobbed by crows. We believe they also had young nearby that were calling from nearby trees. As we walked back down the hill, we saw a magpie feeding on the top of a grass ridge. Another bird which was very confiding was this stone chat that came very close. This bird was ringed with a white and blue ring. If anyone knows any information about potentially where this bird was rung or the background of these blue and white rings, please comment. As we got towards the bottom of the path, there was some goldfinch feeding, like this quite scruffy looking one. Where are we going? Hey folks, we're off to Upton Warren, which is somewhere that uh, Stu's been before, but we haven't. So we're quite looking forward to checking that out as our last hurrah for the day, see how many birds we find there. There's been a couple of birds reported, like a rock pipit and a gargani so fingers crossed we find them stick with us for this see what birds we find and just don't blame me if it's rubbish <laughs> all right <laughs> hey. hey folks we're here at upton warren here's the other two <laughs> there they are there they are we're here at upton warren um somewhere where stew's been before but it's new to us um someone's reported a gargani and also a uh, rock pipit. So we're going to have a look and try and find um, these before it goes dark and before we call it a day. Upton Warren is a reasonably small but lovely little reserve. We walked down the path looking in some of the hedges at the sides to see what small birds there were and were treated to some lovely views of long-tailed tits. When we got to the first hide, we looked out and immediately saw some gulls sitting on some wooden structures in the water, the most numerous being the black-headed gull, but amongst them there was also a lesser blackback gull that was sat preening, visibly larger than the other gulls. The first of the water birds we saw was this lovely little grebe. Amongst the ducks, mainly tufted ducks, there was some teal, like these two, hiding behind some dead grass. We looked in all the hides at the reserve, all were very well presented and neat. We unfortunately didn't find the gargani, so on the way back we looked in the hedges again for some small birds. Picking out from the blue tits this gold crest, which was particularly difficult to get any photographs or footage of, hence it being pretty blurred, but a great bird anyway. Before we left, we tried to get a glimpse of one of the Chetty's warblers that had been singing all around us from almost every direction, but as normal they were nowhere to be seen. By this time it was almost dark, so unfortunately we had to call an end to the day. Hey folks, 
I can just about get you all in the camera. He's, he's still with us. Yeah, we haven't killed him off yet. Um, it's still time. It's still time. Um, we have finished our day birding with Stu from Brit Hikes Ontario. Check out his channel. It's well worth a watch. Subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, really good day. We've got some great views of things like Great, uh, great Spotted Woodpecker, Stone Chat, Meadow Pipit, um, some other stuff. Little Grebe, yeah. Some other cool stuff. We didn't always find what we were looking for, but that's birding for you. But I think we got Stew, a couple of lifers, and some birds. Some really good views of the Stone Chat as well. I like to see that guy. Yeah, Stone Chat was a highlight. Um, so we're going to take Stew home and then take us home as we've got work in the morning. <laughs> so please like, please subscribe, and hit that in, yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> press the notification bell. Ding ding. Ding ding. Yeah. See you in a bit. Bye. bye bye. A massive thank you to our friend Stew. Check out his YouTube channel, Brit Hikes Ontario. You won't regret it. It's great. See you next time. <laughs>